the Septic Ages of the Sky, and today we're going to be messing around with this thing behind me in mechanical power. So let's get started with all of that. And uh, yeah, so where do we begin? So first of all, what is this? Well, this is a wooden gearbox, just like everything else that we have got over here. But behind it, I've created a timer with a delay of 20 seconds. That's just about 20 ticks. That's just one second. Timers are probably the cheapest redstone control we've got at the moment. It's basically gold, lapis, redstone that's it and we've got plenty of that uh, the bellows is pretty much just leather the it's just leather bits and pieces um there's an upgraded version we can't create yet and it's just leather and wood uh easy enough to create so i've created those bits and hooked them up to our existing mechanical power system like this and all this red this timer is doing is turning the gearbox on and off you'll see it's turning the axle on and off and uh, the inputs from below, it's coming from the same line as all of these, so no big deal there. I also created an urn, so I put a clay block on top of the turntable and wait till it turns into an urn, which is the tiniest thing. We're going to be needing that later. Right now we can't do anything with it, however, because that needs a stoke to kiln, and we don't have a stoke to kiln right now. We could build a kiln, which is just basically like five blocks of bricks. But that's that's not going to help us because we need a stoked flame underneath it. We've got a regular flame like this. Uh, we'll be also be using a cold, an upgraded cauldron to get a, an upgraded stoked cauldron, uh, if you like, a little bit later. So, uh, are you pretty much finished with my clay bricks? You are good. I did want to just test what would happen if I actually set a light, uh, some regular uh, charcoal in front of the bellows. Um, because on the hibachi that you put in front of the, it turns the flame blue. I just want to see what happens, just just from idle curiosity, if I uh, if I just set it alight. I mean, you know, you got to try for science, <laughs> for science. Oh, <laughs> it blows it out. We need a better flame, a better flame than that. Now, if you haven't been watching this series, uh, this is now 10 episodes in. If you aren't already subscribed, feel free to click down below for that and click on the bell next to it for notifications for all future episodes if you want to get them. And of course, if you like the episode, press like, of course, but that's entirely up to you. The main thing is getting comments down there to help other players out. So uh, that can go away. And let's carry on with the episode doing, um, well, what we need to. The next thing to do is to create one of these a filtered hopper okay oh and a couple of updates from last episode uh i did want to just mention in here somewhere i've got something ah yes uh the creosote you need to convert the blocks back into the regular creosote form and as soon as you do that and pick it up it actually completes this advancement so that's all an easy one to actually complete no, no real uh hardship there also um here is the recipe with the treated wood that we made for the engineer's workbench so we can pick that advancement up and finally as i mentioned i have now got water set up automatically so i've got that uh, well bucket down there with a liquid hopper pointing up into the wooden basin which automatically keeps it filled so you never need to deal with bucketing again however i've also got another liquid hopper going 90 degrees uh, out and then up into this tank so if i ever need water for another reason i can just go over and, uh, and click on this tank with um, the jerry can forget 10 bottles or 10 blocks of water basically and oh actually i just want to test that yes yes we can but also if i put down let's say for example uh three there and i put down one and two is the middle one actually now a source block no so it can't convert things back into, uh, it, it can't do infinite water, unfortunately. But what it can do is just put down regular source blocks in the world. So yes, so you can just drop it in the world. You just can't pick up from the world. I can't, uh... yeah, that, that, that's disposing of water, not adding water. <laughs> so just a thought and uh, I can keep it full or uh, indeed, I guess I can empty it somehow. Hmm, I haven't figured out how to actually empty it without a tank. Oh, I could just destroy the tank. That would do it. Anyway, that's perfectly fine. Let's just throw those back in my backpack, as well as the engineer's workbench. That can go somewhere else for now. We'll come back to it later. Filtered hoppers. Okay, so this thing is, I think, gear-powered, along with everything else. So I've got a spare axle. And let's see. Oh, well, I hope it is. Well, it's connecting. 
so I'll allow it. <laughs> so you'll see there's a hole in the bottom. Now it's intended that you actually have an urn underneath here, but we don't really have anything like that yet. And what we need to do is throw in some ground up. Uh, where's my, ah, yep, in here. Uh, some ground netherrack, and we also need some soul sand, so I should get some of that. Uh, yep, soul sand. But if you don't have an urn underneath, I believe it spawns a ghast. You can see there's no, there's nothing underneath it right now, but there is an actual thing on the model for it. I think it spawns a ghast, so that's about every eight according to what I saw online, but we'll see if that's the case. So, um, filtered hopper, does this automatically shift click in? It does, good. And then it says throw this in. Yeah, there we go. And it's starting to mutter. Okay, so let me just move that down next to my next to my ranged weapon. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna throw this in. Seven, and then what about eight? Is there any spawns? Maybe that doesn't occur then. Okay, so I am gonna convert all this over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that happens. <laughs> okay, did I lose my stuff though? Did I have to make another one? Uh, looks like I got some bits and pieces back. So that's kind of a destructive process, to be honest, uh, until we get to, you know, uh, having, <laughs> having a better result than that. Wow, okay, I may need to craft a few more of those filtered hoppers. But, uh, or at least find some way of dealing with the gas, I suppose, but that, that would be... Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. We'll see. Uh, let's just uh, just replace the floor and maybe we want to think about a harder floor, really, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, chasing the gas away a little bit more. Um, right, so moving on. Uh, I did want to just mention one other thing. I did level up my Shrieken and that's got now got one modifier. And I'm going to immediately use that to put Luck onto there, okay? There we go. So it has Luck and that will pick up in terms of level of Luck. Uh, I think it's up to 60 or something, is it? Uh, one of 60, yeah. So as you actually then use it, you'll get better and better results out of the loot from there. So that's good. Now I'm just going to take the Hellfire Dust and convert that over into uh, Nether Sludge. So I've got enough for two, for two batches of that. So eight, uh, 16, yeah, 16. And Potash, which is just some oak or wood in a cauldron. So let's just grab the wood and is it, uh, let's just grab some, some logs or something and just dump that in there. I'm sure we'll use it up later for other purposes. So I'll convert that over into nether sludge and then nether sludge can be converted in a stoked cauldron to, um, to pavement, which I don't exactly want. Hardcore pack into hardcore nether sludge, or indeed uh, I can then turn it into unfired nether brick. Now, unfired nether brick is the thing that gets converted across to nether brick in a stoked kiln. So I may need to actually build a, a kiln support first of all, and then look at how I'm going to actually make the hibachi. Uh, I'm going to need some concentrated hellfire. Oh, and that needs to be more of this hellfire dust. Fine. So I'm going to need to do more of that and everything else. I'm going to need this actual next. I can't actually do anything else until I get it. So I guess I'm back to uh, creating more filtered, uh, <laughs> more filtered uh, hoppers. And it seems to work without gas. As long as you don't need to put a few in at a time, then wait, then go put a few in at a time. At least it didn't spawn any more for me. So I should be then able to make the hibachi like that. There we go. And uh, we also get the bellows achievement. And I've just put a frame in here for where the kiln's gonna go. So if we put a hibachi down here, uh, then the fire is gonna be in this block, and then we can put the kiln in the blocks above it. So uh, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And just put a frame in of cobblestone, etc. So then we should be able to have a look now. I'm just wondering if this is just a lever. Uh, let me just uh, grab you. Do you turn on with the lever or do you need actual... Ah, no, you're fine with the lever. Good. So the battery normal flame is okay there. We then want the uh, the bellows flame. So let's just go and put that in place. And then I just need an axle and move this out further. In case you're wondering. It's, uh, it was a little bit dangerous uh, to explode things like that. So yeah, let's just connect things up with... Where's the axle gone?
Uh, I don't know where the other one's gone. Hmm, very odd. Ah, there it is. Okay, fine. So let's connect that up. And now if I do that, we'll... Oh, I need to put the timer in. I'll remove that as well. It's also fairly expensive compared to everything else. Uh, and just set this to 20, uh, 20 ticks. Done. And there we go. We've got a stoked kiln. So we can now then look at what we need to do with the rest of this stuff. Uses for this, a cauldron with some potash to get some nether sludge. So I've got two batches worth. However, uh, I think you says something about not doing this uh, while the, this is hot. Something about it exploding or something along those kind of lines. But um, that's fine. Uh, I think we can probably fire this anyway. Uh, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. And let's turn it on. And that seems to be changing. So hopefully that does change into a, a full urn. Then that can go underneath here. And then it will then collect. There we go. Hopefully collect <laughs> the uh, the soul of the um, the gas. So let's just... Uh, I think I'm actually going to just leave it here. And then I'm just going to put uh, some more. There we go. So that's underneath now and connected. And I'm just going to get more axles and uh, just make it a lot well, more safe. Let's put it that way. At a certain point, that's going to change from an urn, uh, not an herb, an urn, into a soul urn. So if we just go there, you see it says a soul urn. And that is after eight, it looks like. So just bear in mind when you're actually doing it. And then that can be used to turn into a void urn and other different types of stuff later, like soul forge steel and um, yet you earn back. So yeah, there's there's other stuff going on there as well. But for the moment, uh, that's that and I'll connect it back up later. So for now we have this. Uh, what we can also do is put a cauldron in place if we want to make another hibachi. Um, if we don't, you can just swap them out by just uh, changing this block to uh, your cauldron and then doing that. So I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to make another cauldron so I can leave that, exa that one exactly where it is and we'll go from there. So if I remember rightly, it's something like just five pieces of clay and then you just put it through the kiln. I think it's like that. Yeah. Unfired clay bowl. And then is that uh, just uses for that? You? Yes, it turns into a cauldron. So we'll just drop that in there. Good. So stoked cauldron then. Stoked cauldron. The cauldron cauldron it doesn't really have any easy recipes like that it's the potash I actually want so we'll just go the other way you can't make it in a regular cauldron it's a stoked version so nothing you can do really much to do for that so we just need to throw in some wood to a stoked cauldron and we'll end up with potash and the potash then can be used to make soap okay with tallow I guess but also to make this nether sludge, which then we can then put through everything, wherever it is, into uh, making... Uh, I've forgotten where it is. Nether brick. Nether brick. Are you here? Where are you around here? Fiery? No, I just want the regular kind of nether brick, please. You're not going to give me that? No? No? No. Ah. Ah, there it is. You just put one and then turns into unfired nether brick. Yep, no problems. So that's that's perfectly easy to actually do. So everything should be done now. Let's take a look. There's our cauldron. Uh, we'll just go and swap that out to get our potash bag. Uh, let's just grab that and put the cauldron in place. And then we can basically do that and everything should work. So now I just need some wood and I happen to have some wood on me. So let's just throw that in there. And that should start converting. You see it's got some particle effects, so let's hope that's the case. And we'll come back when it's done. I should note, by the way, these bellows will basically blow any flames in the 3x3 three three in front of it. So if you want to put more off this axis, uh, it will make things go faster, I believe, for in, in the regular kiln. So if you've got plenty of, uh, plenty of the hellfire dust to spare, um, you may want to go for it that way. And by the way, when you actually put uh, when you put another rack into the millstone, um, yes, it starts uh, having a little bit of a reaction. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave that there. Um, however, I do want to go make an ender hopper. So I think uh, that may be useful. We've got uh, a few things that could use it. Mob farms, that's another one. But an ender hopper would also be of use for uh, maybe that kiln. If, if the stuff pops off and gets ready to be picked up, if there's an ender hopper, it can just pick it up and put it in a crate, assuming that I actually have a spare crate. Now I'll just get a chest. Uh, assuming I had some wood, that would be nice. Oh, I've got some crates there. Fine. Always with us. Always the first place you look. And let's just pop that, um, I don't know, say here. And put the end hopper on top. I don't think there's any configuration for this thing. Uh, either, neither shift or uh, right click or shift right click work. So let's just throw something on the ground and let's see if it, uh, let's see if it picks it up. Particle effects. Not very fast, but it does pick it up. Okay. Fine, and uh, we have potash in here anyway, so we can just let that burn through to regenerate some and uh, then swap it back out for a kiln when we're done. And just as a quick demonstration, I fired the urn in our kiln. You can see I put it underneath there, the urn, and this goes on top. And if I just throw it all in here, there we go. And the urn has, oh, I should have dropped to the floor. There it is, and there's my fourth. I've crafted quite a few of these hellfire dust just in case I need them in the future but for right now I think I'm okay with that amount I should have even more of that sludge over in this cauldron which I do and then we can just convert that straight across to unfired nether, uh, nether brick and we need 36 of this 48 is just a bit much but it's fine in case I need for some other things and yep this ender, this, uh, ender hover works just fine uh, in fact we could even probably look at a block placer or something like that to put stuff into the kiln automatically or a dispenser or something but hey it, it'll just work regardless and the ender hopper will just do that so just keep on clicking your mouse until you've got 36. and it took me about 10 seconds for me to be utterly sick of doing that so i'll put a dispenser with the the in the output facing into the actual kiln center block and let's just put down a timer for let's just say 200 uh, so 10 seconds and uh, it should give a pulse then i've got 27 in there so it should pulse insert one wait 10 seconds try to insert a second one now if you try to insert a second one and there's one in there then there are a bit of problems that it kind of get it'll get kicked picked up by the uh, uh the end hopper up here but let's give this a go so it's in 10 seconds it should be enough time uh will it oh there's the first one so that's done and let's see if the second one comes through if it does then it probably means that everything's okay and it's placed it the first time and everything works there we go so yeah everything's working that is fully automated so i could just move this uh, to a better location it does pull from all the way over here sometimes so yeah it's got a decent range as you can see the range i think when you actually look at it yeah you can see the box in faint sort of lines around which it can actually pull from so yeah very easy thing to actually do and that's fully automated now now we could uh, also add a cauldron in here uh but it, uh, yeah it can't really do it here because it's a three by three block basically so it'd have to come from one forward and then we'd have another hibachi right here and it would sit in front of the kiln and then the the cauldron would be right there like that so that is one and well another way to actually do this whole thing and then we can just uh, basically get rid of this block and I think that block, yeah. And that means I can probably get to just moving that lever around to this side and then have that three by three that I've dug in. So I kind of like the whole approach to things. What has that got us? So on the advancements, it's got us all the way to nether brick on here. Importantly, that then lets us build up here the blast oven and all the crude blast furnace uh, basically and we need 36 of those 36 clay and then just the, the bits in the middle uh, the um uh, what's the bits in the middle ah it's just blaze powder so you need nine batches so nine blaze powder for that and uh, we've got enough for the blast furnace crude steel on the go I did check out what the use of the soul and to convert it into the void and was and it is quite obvious from the name void Basically, it voids the souls that are going to normally go into the urn. And that means, I think, they did the whole thing safe, so I put a void urn underneath. And it's just an eye vendor and a bit of crucible, uh, a bit of crucible, a bit of um, obsidian. Crucible is the thing I'm going to create here. Uh, so this is the other block that you can create for use with this. So let's just grab it now. It converts across from a block of clay. 
and we want to just basically uh, put this in there and let's just turn that back on again uh, wait for it to actually disappear it should disappear in less than 10 seconds and then turn this on uh, I don't want to actually turn it on when it's um, I don't want to try and put this in while this is hot just in case it explodes and uh, when that's done then what we should get is um, a fired cruci crucible out of here it's different to a cauldron there we go crucible and the crucible can be put in above uh, a stoked flame and you see I've got some iron swords now I think this may start deconstructing this into the components and in particular I'm looking for things like uh, iron ingots and gold and stuff like that it is processing so uh, if you go into recipes here it also is basically a, a furnace sure but if you go forward you'll see it takes things like tools and gives you back the ingots they're from iron boots and you get two and a two point six <laughs> two and six uh there we go so iron nugget and iron ingot so yeah a little convert over you don't get everything back but if you're getting this from a mob farm hmm uh where's my mob farm <laughs> there it is over there it's very slow at the moment but what you could do is end the chest them over pipe them in or something along those kind of lines and have a good source of uh of materials of whatever kind of things drop in your uh, mob farm so yeah i like it, it saves me mining it's a bit slow but it is automatic generation from nothing i guess so cool um that's pretty good for me and now my clay should be done hopefully which should mean I'll be able to make my blast brick. 34, really? I've got two left. 35. <laughs> One left. Should not take very long. And uh, I've got the blaze powder. I've got the uh, nether bricks. So everything should be good there once this last piece of clay converts into a brick. And uh, we're good to go. Right. Um, is there anything else I want to do this episode? Uh, let's just take a look at the top. So next onward, we're going to be going into basically power generation. So we got water wheels or we got windmills. Uh, both are good options. Although windmills, I think, I think water wheels need steel. Water wheel. Yeah. So you need steel for that. But we're about to make something that can produce steel, of course and treated sticks and, and, and uh, planks fair enough uh, the other one is the windmill and spoiler alert on this one if you make the windmill you're going to need uh well just iron for them and lots of um treated wood planks and sticks etc but you're also going to want the sails there we go windmill sails and that's going to need a whole bunch of um to fabric which is hemp around sticks so that's why you have your hemp farm that I've been telling you to, to keep hold of and keep processing for a while. Um, mine's here. Um, just throw it into the mill and there we go. So let's go for the blast brick. Uh, let's get all of them. Cool, 27. And for the moment, I'm just going to put these on top, I think. I'll move it later. Honest. Uh, and then you need three there, so I need to just move these torches temporarily and yes yes we'll just put them back there we go there we go and i can still get to just about the coat break underneath so there's no problem there although i may need to move this up because i'll need to do stuff with it but uh it's fine for the moment while i look at some things so um i just need my hammer don't i where's my hammer is it in here yes it is there we go. So we've got one blast furnace to make steel from. So steel ingot should just be, uh, well, in fact, it's not showing up that soul forged steel, regular steel. So it's going to take iron and turn into steel with uh, the obviously coal, coke or whatever else you want to put in here. So let's just grab some uh, iron, a little bit of iron. Um, let's just make eight. And where's my coal coke? I did put it in here somewhere. Uh, that's regular charcoal. Where's my coal coke gone? There we go. And I'm going to do a whole block at a time as it's like one operation. And uh, yeah, we should get a full block of steel out of that, which we can then convert back across 
uh, using smelting or indeed, you know, the stone anvil or any other method. Metal presses are coming up soon, which will make uh, the whole process of doing that easy. And then we can throw out this thing. Basically, it'll do plates and uh, ingots. In fact, a, a regular smeltery can is anyway, but it just costs me lava every time I actually use it. And I don't have infinite lava yet. I can go across to the, the nether, but I don't have infinite lava yet, technically speaking. And I'm just going to turn off these because I don't really need them. And we have lots of nice resources. Well, not lots, but a few nice resources from running the Crucible. Cool. They can go away. A little bit less mining for me. Next thing up, creating our power generators. So we've got two things to do. One is an LV capacitor. So we've got some lead here, some copper, other bits and pieces that you've already seen. So we need one of those. We also need a kinetic dynamo, no matter whether you choose wind or water, it doesn't really much matter. But to make that, you need to make uh, engineers wire cutters. Now they need an iron knife blade. I've already made that. Um, turns out my shuriken stuff comes in handy. And then you're going to just basically combine that with eight copper plates and you'll get eight copper, uh, copper wire. I could do with some uh, sticks if I've got some around. Oh, that may not be enough. Well, we'll see. Um, or maybe it will. Well, let's just take a look. So, oops, we want to ah, craft these. Ah, that should be enough. That's fine. And then a copper coil with uh, an iron ingot. I need a bit more iron, I think. Yeah, watch one more. I should do. There we go. One copper coil block. And that then gets us with a couple of redstone once I pick those up. Our kinetic dynamo. And done. Okay, so that's two of those. Then we need to actually go and choose which one we want to go for. So um, I normally go for water wheels because you can usually stack them next to each other and uh, I can put them inside then and just power them by falling water. It tends to be my preference. So for that, we need a bunch of water wheel segments, four of them per water wheel. And each one of them takes three planks and four sticks. So uh, that's five wood, I think. Is it two sticks per? Uh, two to four. So yes, it is two sticks. So that's five per one of these. So we need 20 uh, treated wood per, um, per water wheel. Plus a bit of steel. Uh, is my steel done? Steel is done. So let's just dump this onto our hammering block, wherever I put the hammering block. And then this should count to steel. There we go, stealing it. Then we can just go ahead and make this. So uh, I'm just gonna convert across, uh, it's, it's like 20 per, isn't it, did I say? Something like that. So uh, it's gonna be 20 there, okay. And we just need to convert them across into sticks, etc., and stuff like that. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just gonna convert half. It'll be close enough and then I can actually just do the rest later if it's wrong. Also wheel segment, so I can just do one, two, three, four. I will be making more so and you always use sticks and those so that's just the easiest thing to do and then there we go with one water wheel all right so then we need to find a place to put it i think it's quite large i think it's seven by seven internal by one so you need a place to put that along with the power generation right next to it so i think well I don't necessarily want it up here, so I'm, let's go downstairs and find a place for it. I do already have the water wheel for this underneath here, but it's not in the mining layer below because I haven't mined out everything down there. In fact, I'll just show you what I've mined out and you'll see. Uh, so the water wheel is just going to be over that way somewhere. Ah, stop bouncing and climbing. Uh, oh, it's awful sometimes. So, yeah, you can see I've dug out quite a bit, but... Uh, I don't think it's high enough. It's going to be up there somewhere, basically, our whole setup. So, yeah, I, I don't know quite what I'm going to do with this whole space. So I think what I'm going to do is set up some temporary for now, because we do have lots of space down here. And then from there, later on, we'll just move it because it's no big deal. All right, let's see if I remember the size correctly. So uh, let's just put a block down there. Let's just try and attach this to this block. Yep, I did remember the size correctly. It's huge. Okay, that, that's that's good to know. 
uh, I think I'm just going to pick that up for a second and then we'll just replace that block with the kinetic dynamo and I can't remember which way around it places. I think that's the correct way of placing it from memory. And then we're going to then just put our water wheel back and that should be mounted on this shaft. And then basically we just need to put some water in here and, and surround this with whatever blocks we want. So again, um, I think I'm just going to bring the, the, the water down one side and let's just take that away for a second, which means you just need to have enough room or enough um, blocks to contain the water. And you want as much of the as much of the water wheel as you can surrounded by water. So you want it to be not that block, but that block. And it'll sweep down this side, down to the bottom, underneath, around the raceway, and uh, basically uh, let this whole thing work. So from that, that means we basically want to contain everything sort of this way. And normally I go with something more decorative like glass later, but to get this running, you actually want something just to get it started so that the water is actually still contained. So let's just put that down there and that should be fine. I don't think it'll flow out any other way. Uh, so let's just climb up here and let's see if this actually works the way I expect it to. So this is the center. That's not the center. So off it goes down that way. Now oh, it has flown out sideways. So that's fine. But it already has started rotating, as you see. So let's just uh, let's just strain the water. There we go. And we'll just block it in for now. Not that it's needed, but, uh, you know, that's fine. There we go. OK, and now this thing should be generating. So if we just put the LV capacitor on top, it should if the LV capacitor is that there is like a yeah, you see on top there is like a, a, a blue section. That's the input and we have to move it around. So I have to need to remember what the tool is to move things around with immersive engineering, uh, immersive engineering. What's the tool called? Uh, I thought it was different. It's just the the basically the hammer. So no big deal there. So let's just pick this up. Uh, oh, we can't just pick it up with carry on. Yeah, carry on's the mod that lets us do that kind of thing. And can we do this without? Yeah, it's not charging. So what I'll do is just get rid of you for a second. Uh, hopefully. Yeah, and then step, step down here and configure the bottom to be the input and then put this back <laughs> and hopefully it faces the right way. It doesn't face the right way. Turn. Turn again. There it is. It's charging. Good. So that's actually now working. We're generating power. And to get more power, all we really need to do uh, here is just basically stack more water wheels with more water on top. Now, I know they stack to at least three I'm not sure if they stack wider than that. I need to actually check, but I have done three before. And as you can see here, we get, uh, we've got IF, IRF uh, power generating just fine. Now to transmit power elsewhere, you need to actually craft a couple of blocks and it's, it's going to take you through windmills. We have to craft a windmill anyway, even though we don't want one. Fine, fine. Uh, and then into basically a couple of things about dial wires. But the things you're going to want are essentially connectors, Connector. Uh, you're going to want the LV wire connector, and you're also going to want the uh, LV relay if there is a relay. LV wire relay, yes. So uh, this is just terra uh, copper and terracotta, and terracotta is just smelted clay. Easy enough. And LV wire relay is pretty much the same, just with less copper. Fair enough. The other thing is the wire. Now the wire comes in two varieties. Uh, let's just take a look. Uh, well, this, first of all, different classes of wire for different uh, levels of voltage. So basically copper wire is the one we want for our current one. And then I think we can actually upgrade that. Can we? Can we upgrade it to LVY coil? Yep, yeah, that's the one we want. And then LVY coil is what we'd actually use to connect everything together. But if you add hemp cloth or to fabric, hemp cloth is just hemp fibers uh, together, you get insulated LVY coil which helpfully stops you from being fried as you're actually walking near the uh, the, the wires. Uh, they are physical wires. They're strung around everywhere, all over the place. So it helps to, to route them in sort of straight lines connected by relays with at the ends having connectors on them. And that will take you to whichever machines you're going to have. So maybe we change this down here into some sort of machine room. 
It's interesting. I'm not sure if we're going to have enough space. It's, the machine room tends to be quite large with uh, immersive engineering, but uh, I think everything's working correctly. So I'm just going to go and make a couple of connectors and let's see if, if, if there is an actual example uh, machine we can build first. I mean, it takes us towards the, um, the core drill, but we're not there yet. Uh, it does take you into the engineer's workbench and then says you need to craft some vacuum tubes, etc. So th there's that bits and pieces, but I think the main machines I probably want. Let's just look at the metal press. Is there, in fact, we've got the book. Have we got the book on me? Yes, I have. Uh, that's the blast furnace. I want the simple machines and I want the, uh, not the simple machines, metal press. There we go. Um, what blocks does it take? So steel scaffolding, I need quite a bit of the steel. Conveyor belt is going to be a leather and a heavy engineering block. What's the heavy engineering block in uh, this pack? Oh my, lots of steel. Lots and lots and lots of steel. I don't have enough steel. <laughs> that's, not, that's not something I can craft today. Ah well, but we do have power generation and we'll come back next episode with the first machines to use that power and um, yeah, go from there really and head off into the rest of the age producing oil, distillation and heading towards plastics on the right hand side and then uh, there's the Billcraft, Billcraft pipes and you can use things like uh, yeah, redstone engines. I haven't used those in a long time. Um, I don't remember them being difficult but I remember the pipes having lots of different types. Uh, Billcraft pipe? Yeah, there's lots of different types. Some of these basically extract things like wooden pipes. Some of them just move it around. I think there's a stone pipes. Yeah, stone and quartz transport pipes. Basically different speeds and stuff like that. And there's one for water. And yeah, there's lots and lots and lots of stuff to do. But for the time being, we've got power generation up and running. We've got uh, everything I needed to do over here. All the stoked kilns, the soaked fire, etc. to get that. And ender hoppers, which should actually be quite useful for the mob farm. And over there, where occasionally was the mob farm. We're occasionally generating ender pearls from things are falling down. I do actually need to now expand that now that we have access to the redstone lamps. There we go. We can do that with uh, glowstone and redstone. And you can put levers on those and redstone between them to turn on your farm on and off. So that can be quite uh, expanded quite a bit. And from that, lots and lots of vector plates. And then we'll get lots more spawns and lots more loot at the bottom. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I think that we're at the end now, and I will see you next time for some more Subtech Ages of the Sky, and maybe even some more Astral Sorcery. We need to get some progression from that, and also from Blood Magic. Now, from Blood Magic, I'm going to probably be skipping through quite a bit of the, the Rune and Altar generation and just showing you the final thing. Each, um, well, not the final thing, but each tier of the Altar, because you basically have to do the same process again and again in a larger and larger structure just like you do with uh, astral sorcery and once you've seen it all once like even this stage you've seen it again and we then change these runes out to special versions that do more stuff generally you'll do the self-sacrifice ones for the first ring while you're setting everything up and then later on you'll be using mobs to power your whole blood magic stuff and there's lots of really really good stuff at the end of blood magic so blood magic um sentient sword for example is one of them sentient sword so that is pretty good <laughs> as far as as far as damage is concerned and you make that in the hellfire forge uh there's also the living armor um or uh, uh, uh is it spelt the proper way oh <laughs> okay <laughs> when i say proper way I mean the English spelling, you see? <laughs> I'm English, that's the, way it's, that's the way it is. And again, that's alchemy arrays, that's like a summoning kind of thing to get to the living helmet. I don't think there's is the bound stuff in there as well. Yeah, so there's bound tools which use your life point network to do massive, uh, massive scooping out of resources and stuff like that. So there's lots of stuff to be really overpowered in Blood Magic itself. And indeed in Astral Sorcery, there's a whole perk system you can apply to yourself to increase your toughness or your damage or you can make plants grow around you or you can have ores randomly appear and all kinds of crazy stuff that we're going to get to in that as well so lots and lots of stuff to come in the various different mods but next episode i'll probably start at least with the power stuff and maybe move on to back onto the magic ones depending i want to balance a little bit of progress with uh, in, the, in the whole age with strength in the character, which uh, sounds good. And there is an actual airship. I've never actually, I've never even looked at that mod. I have no idea how that works. So uh, what, what creative flight options do we have? Do we have any angel rings in this, uh, in this 
age? I doubt we do. No. How about ring? <laughs> any uh, any lucky sort of uh, chicken chicken ring? No. No, we're not having chicken rings. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sure we'll find creative flight sooner or later. But for now, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time.